Nexus Monthly. When you grow up in Texas, you're raised on the symbols that define this place. The heroes of the Alamo, wildcatters in the oil field, and the Texas Rangers. No, not the baseball team. Instead, picture this, a stoic, steely-eyed man with a silver star pinned onto his shirt, riding his horse through brushland or mesquite or high desert, and he's wearing a white Stetson hat. The Rangers' charisma is undeniable. They offer a vision of Texans who are righteous, self-reliant, principled, and powerful. When you went out with the Texas Rangers with the white hat, the fancy guns, the door would open and whether it was a man, woman, old person, young person, everyone would just kind of melt. You have something that is iconic because of both the reality of the Rangers themselves and the fact that they're this huge pop culture presence that are out there. And they're pretty much the archetype for the heroes of old Western movies. Rangers, our mission is to stop the outlaw. You know what you are! The Rangers were created 200 years ago by Stephen F. Austin. They rode into battle against the Comanche. They helped Texas wage a war of secession against Mexico. One riot, one Ranger is still prophetic and still true today. They were the men who finally brought outlaws like Bonnie and Clyde to justice. But there's another part of that history that gets left out. My name is Jack Herrera. When I started tracing my family's roots along the border, I talked with Texans about the Rangers. How for some Texans, the white hats had become synonymous with justice and protection. But how, for other Texans, those hats mean something much different. People were very vocal. They're like, we have an image of what Texas is, who our heroes are, and we don't want that tarnished or touched. Join me as we hear true stories of battles and forgotten rebellions. Hayes killed one of them. He knocked over two more as they rose to their feet. As they rushed him, he dropped one and then another who fell head foremost against his shins. Stories of survival and of violent injustice. And so they actually bring him out and across the street from us, uh, they set up eight men and actually set him there and he's like, okay, go ahead and kill me. We know that it was an injustice and you just kind of wonder, will it ever be justified to the point where you can live with it and you can't? of a bloody era that created the social divisions we're still living with today. Are my family lying to me or maybe my ancestors were bad? You know, how do I deal with this? How do I reconcile what I'm being told at home and what I'm reading in the textbook? It's not just the massacre itself, but it's the injustice of the failure to fully acknowledge and reckon with the harm caused. This is a search for what defines Texas and who gets to be Texan or American for that matter. I'm someone who works from a framework that we all have space to heal and to learn. This isn't just a kumbaya, let's hold hands, but more of telling history straight up because we are living history. And what it means to live up to the Ranger ideal of justice and honor. Essentially, history started out as a moral philosophy of who we are, good and bad, warts and all, and thinking about how we could become better. From Texas Monthly, this is White Hats, a story of the Texas Rangers and a battle for the soul of Texas. Coming November 15th.